I guess a lot of that may make me seem like an uncool person in today's culture. Like somehow we've associated being fun and being cool with drinking. But it's not that I want people to know that on the other side of that, my life has become freer. Um, I feel more disciplined. I'm scaling mountains that I've never scaled before. I think I'm a better friend. Um, I know for certain that I am a better person. I'm a better partner. That I'm a better mother than I would have been had drinking had been a part of my life. And I don't say that to pressure you because I, how could I? I would be an absolute hypocrite if I said that to pressure you. I drank with the best of them. I had more nights that I <laughs> couldn't remember um, than probably anyone in my early 20s. But again, it's about giving people permission to choose something different. And I don't want to feel that I have to pretend that I think drinking is okay just because the entire world is doing something doesn't make it right and doesn't make it okay. That's really all I'm going to say about that for now. I do want to slowly unpack this because there's more here. We should talk about the lies surrounding the failure of prohibition. We should talk about the history of drinking in America. And we should talk about a lot of societal ills that we are facing today because of this one area that people don't have the confidence to address, that I didn't have the confidence to address. But I feel like I now do. But I feel certain that there was a reason that God wanted me to stop drinking and gave me this platform following that decision. But for now, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, let's jump right into some of your comments from episodes past. This comment is regarding something that I always say, which is your life is your fault. It's very important for people to know that. And I particularly say this regarding people who think that Having a bad childhood somehow causes them to be bad adults. And they always go back and say, well, I lived this in my childhood, so it's totally fine. Great cultural example of that is Prince Harry. He's been an awful human being publicly. He's thrashed his parents, his, his grandparents. He's using his dead mother to sell books. And yet he goes, oh, but, you know, because in middle school, my brother didn't talk to me. What? That doesn't work like that. You don't get to be a bad person. Or he says, of course, because my mother died, I'm allowed to now be a horrible person and a horrible person to my family and selling them out. It doesn't work like that. See, Franco writes, which he's quoting me here, how you respond to your childhood is entirely your fault. He says, this is partially true, but there's other things to consider. A good carpenter can build a table and it's sturdy. It'll do the job it's expected to do long after the carpenter is gone. A bad carpenter can build a table and maybe it's wobbly or unstable. It needs some repair or adjust before it'll perform like the well-made table. A child's mind and spirit are 100% built by parents, but not all parents are good at doing it. A broken child grows up to be a broken adult. We all need some adjustment or repair, some more than others. I don't disagree with that. I think we're saying exactly the same thing. Um, a broken child can grow up to be a broken adult, but once you're an adult, you're an adult, and it's time to repair your own table, right? And that's why I say your life is your fault. We have to stop excusing people and saying, that you're allowed to be a bad person because of a past experience trauma. And I also want to say this, the overwhelming majority, I mean, find me a person that has had a perfect cushion tolerance. And I think that's what's wrong is that for some reason, we all have in our figment of imagination that there are people that have perfect childhoods. And presumably there are, but it's a handful, right? People have issues because human beings are fallible and because we sin and because we have baggage and we, we, unload that baggage on our children and people can be traumatized by weird things you know and i told you a story of a girlfriend of mine who was traumatized when her parents told her because her child was so cushiony that she suddenly had to pay rent but she was legitimately traumatized by this she was like i have no skills i've never had to do anything my entire life now my parents are kind of leaving me alone and she went through a period of abandonment and felt very lost right we, we can't all just say that because in our minds we have some idea that somebody else is living a better childhood that that somehow allows us to become bad adults because we suffered a different childhood. The majority of people have suffered blows in their childhood. It's not about whether or not you suffer them, it's how you respond to them. So I think my point still holds in that you actually are agreeing with me but saying it in a different way.